All right, we got two people up in here. Let's get started. Yo, welcome to Red Sings the Blues. I'm your host, man, behind the mic today. We've got Red Pill Thor in the building. What's up, man? Living the dream out here in California, Red. How about you? <laughs> man, New Jersey is pretty cold. We, I mean, you know, actually a little bit, um, just a little bit about New Jersey. We had one day where it was actually 60 degrees, and I just took it a huge advantage of that because New Jersey right now, although it's sunny, it's really, really windy. And I think we're just getting the... Uh, you know, the cold fronts right now of, you know, what's left of winter. Um, daylight savings time actually just started. So we have longer days and shorter nights. I just realized that because it's seven o'clock and it's usually and, and surprisingly enough, we're so it's supposed to be nighttime right now. But I totally forgot that it is um, daylight savings time. So I actually lose an hour of sleep. And I totally forgot about that. That that did not cross my mind one bit that um, daylight saving time happened. Because I was like, wait a minute. It's still kind of, as I look out my window, it's still, you can't really see it. Because this uh, 1080p camera is crap, which is why I'm going to get a new one. But uh, once I get that one, you'll be able to see all the clouds and shit. But um, So, Red, yeah. let me ask you a question about daylight saving time. Hmm. How do you feel about that stuff? I, I could see I could tell you out here in California, as crazy as we are, we voted to get rid of it. Really? Absolutely. Wait, 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 wait. So you, but, you're telling me that you you guys as a state wanted to it, get daylight saving? We passed the we because it's ridiculous. Look, the only reason they brought about daylight saving time was so people would watch more TV. I swear to God, this came in right after World War II, and then they came in with the myth that, oh, no, it was for farmers because we need the kids to work in the field. Total BS. And they passed this across the nation, and it was part of putting the propaganda out throughout the 50s to solidify the nation after the war. It's ridiculous. Look, if, the, <laughs> if we're worried about the clock, just readjust your schedule. We're yeah. grown adults here. And finally, California actually passed a measure to get rid of it and the governor said, no, we're going to abide by the federal law that was put into place back after World War II. So we passed it to get rid of it, and we didn't do it. We oh. still on daylight savings time. Oh, yeah, funny, <laughs> funny how uh, California, it's funny how California now uh, follows the rules of the federal government. But for the last four years, they didn't really do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> funny, funny how they funny how they pick and choose who they what they listen to. <laughs> but, well, it's, it's you know, your 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 government, but yeah, uh, they they can't decide whether they're Marxist or progressives or <laughs> you know li liberals. It doesn't matter, you know. They, they have no idea. It's kind of all the same out here, really. Definitely, definitely. But let's talk about you, man. Let's talk about Red Pill Thor. Who are you? Where did you come from? What what do we need to know about you? Sure, Red. I'll give it to you in a nutshell. My real name is Thor. I was born with that name, and I was born before the comics came out. So they stole my thunder and put Chris Hemsworth on the TV. Right. Well, anyway, uh, I'm 58 and a half years old. Um, been in California since I was four years old, born in Texas. Um, I, am, I am a power lineman by trade, and I train other power linemen. And I work for a large electric utility, and I also have additional businesses. I have a property rental business for which I own units and, of course, rent. Uh, and I have an online retail business that serves power alignment as well. It's been in place since 1999. So it's a little bit cutting edge on getting the retail uh, web business out there, which is good, though, because it provided for the family and allowed me to expand my income streams. Uh, as you can tell, I'm kind of into fitness, have been for quite a while. Uh, and uh, excuse me, uh, when I was 52 years old, I was extremely fit, but uh, I was having a lot of sluggish issues. And I did begin uh, the testosterone replacement therapy, and it was a godsend for an older man. Uh, as I approach 60, it really makes the difference. Right. Uh, although you can see behind me, this is my home gym, and I have dedicated at least four days a week an hour at a time to maintaining my earth suit in the peak possible condition. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to be fit at any age. Really. It changes the game for you socially and also for your own confidence level. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what I focus on. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people call me, you know, 
as a coach, I don't like the terms coach when I, when I work with people. I'm more of a lifestyle advisor because I try to get people to change their lifestyle if they're asking for help. And I like to find out about them and find out elements in their life that they can put together that works for them, not me, but works for them so they can achieve a lifestyle that they are living the dream, be it fitness, be it with their relationships, be it with any aspect of their lives, money, muscle, mm -hmm. uh, relationships, um, putting it all together so that they are living the dream, continuously improving and improving their attractiveness, not only to themselves, but to those around them. Mm, okay. So that's kind of my mission out here in the, I guess they call it the manosphere, but I've been, I've been passive since uh, mid 2014 and active since about 2018. Okay. Active and active for me will look like nothing compared to the others that are out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of lurking and commenting on Reddit or or some of the groups. Yeah. Uh, although although I am pretty active in assisting a couple of the guys out there right now as needed, and that would uh, be Fresh and Fit podcast. Those guys I think are doing a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, uh, modern life dating, his podcast and dude party. I support that. Mm -hmm. And in a, uh, kind of a background situation, I support Sterling Cooper and the real zero team as well. Uh, um, and we'll see where that goes in the future. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, it's uh, very, very, uh, <laughs> De it's definitely a mouthful of things, uh, but definitely something in which I can definitely get down with. I haven't really been able to watch um, much of the Fresh and Fit podcast because I've been doing a lot more of my podcast because I, I want to, you know, like I, I, I look good on those dudes, uh, you know, but I, I, I want to do, you know, my own thing and mm -hmm. be successful in my own way because, um, you know. Oh, we support you too, Red. Don't worry about that. Oh no, no, and I and I do appreciate that. I remember when uh, I was on a uh, John's uh, podcast uh, when he had those panels and stuff like that. Um, I haven't been on John's channel as of now because I've, you know, I have uh, my own obligations. Uh, currently, right now, I'm getting. Uh, I, I've been. Oh, I just got OSHA certified. Just got. Um, I'm. I got forklift certified. Now I'm getting first aid certified that's for my other job oh that's fantastic um, yeah man i've been really grinding on really what i really need to do with um you know the entertainment industry when it comes back whenever it does uh but also getting this uh you know getting this thing done you know like getting a crowd and stuff like that have my own you know stuff going on because who, who knows when this thing happens again but also to um you know, I, I want to, you know, try to, you know, get at least, you know, up to the 100K, 1 million subscriber count. So that's, you know, it's not going to be a walk in the park, but hey. no, but it'll be worth it. Red, I'll tell you this. I personally think there's room for everybody mm -hmm. as this grows. It'll grow beyond YouTube. Believe me, this YouTube is just a single platform. We'll see in the future. And uh, there's going to be a lot of room for this. It's kind of supplanting the traditional entertainment outlets because there's valuable information. Now, of course there's crappy information too, but it filters out. So yeah, those that bring quality are going to rise to the top. Yeah, definitely. And I want to be in that number when that happens, because uh, I've been thinking about it, you know, like uh, to have a podcast that, that I can call my own, that's something in which I've been thinking about. And then not only that, be able to, you know, interview people like you, you know, like Joe Rogan style and to, you know, do what the Fresh and Fit podcast is doing. You know, that's my that's my next goal. That's what I really want to do. You know, get people in discussions and whatnot and, you know, have have these sorts of discussions, because I think, you know, more or less I've become what people have called me now here in the space is uh, the moderator, uh, the moderator mm -hmm. podcast. You know, like they've said that, um, you know, they, they like my perspective on things. So, you know, I've been, you know, taking that with a grain of salt. I said, you know what? All right, cool. You know, there are some people that hate me because I don't know, they're trolls and stuff like that. But yeah, that's what the cute that's what the uh that's what the members only chat is for. And that's coming red, red, red. There's gonna be haters no matter what. I mean, oh yeah, oh, you've yeah. heard me talk. There are people that just make up crap just because it's fun to make up crap and post stuff on your on your site. It, oh, yeah. It's kind of funny, but then again, it just goes with the territory. And if you get enough of it, 
you know what they say when you're a bomber and you get the most flack you're over your target yeah no and that's a definite and i've i've never really gotten oh you know, just you know flustered about it i've just been like hey look, look, listen <laughs> I, i'm still here you can't really get me off you know like you, you haven't yeah. nobody really hasn't given me a reason to just yeah hey, just give up so well, there is a little bit of a, a an old school mentality that's out there with uh with some of the channels and i liken it to when i grew up i was in a small town and we only had a few auto mechanics and guess what? They were all good, but they all hated each other because they felt the other guys were stealing their business. Well, it was a small town. Mm. <laughs> so they all talked bad about each other, but they were all really good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's kind of a little of that going on. And as the platforms expand and as the audience expands, I think that'll be less and less of a problem. Yeah, definitely. Now let's talk about the East and the West. Now, I, I definitely, I don't know if you've ever been to the East Coast. I haven't been to the West Coast just yet. That is uh, one of the many things I have to do. Actually, uh, to say to say that, um, I actually am going to go see my cousin. Probably, I, I'm actually discussing that with him. Uh, the the whole thing in a nutshell and what I'm gonna do. But uh, I think I might do a podcast out there in Portland, and because he's in Oregon, yeah, Portland, Oregon, and I I have to see my cousin. You know, I haven't really done that in a really long time. I I you know I missed him when he was in New York. I actually got to see him before he left New York, but um, I definitely um, got to see him again. But um, like, can, what can you tell me about the West Coast that is different from the East Coast? Because I can tell you for a fact that, you know, there are a lot of guys here in the East Coast that are making, you know, like red pill channels. So I would say like the East Coast is a lot more red pill than the West Coast. But you guys got Coach Greg Adams and a uh, young men's daily red pill. So that's oh, yeah. Greg, uh, Coach Greg's great. I mean, he's been around for a while. Uh, you know, he's kind of an older guy like me, not as old, but, you know, he's, he's a he's youngster yeah. compared to me. But yeah. he has uh, he has connected and he puts out solid information on a regular basis. And there's that quality once again, um, you know, and uh, there, there's some other guys on the West Coast that I would say are red pill. Um I personally have met John Sonmez. I've got no beef with that guy. I think for what he's doing for himself, you know, uh, I applaud him. Absolutely. Uh, seemed like a heck of a nice guy to me and that he was on mission. Mm -hmm. And that's what I know about him. I'm not a member or anything like that. I'm not promoting anybody. Uh, just man to man. Um, and then uh, that's, I'm not too sure how many other guys are out here. Um in California, but you know, California, California is a very left leaning state. And for some reason, uh, MGTOW, the red pill tends to lean a little bit right of center, I think in political viewpoints, I'm not really a political guy. I would be called, I would be called a classical liberal in my political viewpoints. I mean, the right's going to hate me and the left's going to hate me because it's a very individualistic viewpoint, very much like Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Um, if you look at, at him in history, that's where I would align myself politically. And that's really not a good spot to be public about on either side because of the polarization that mass media and uh, the traditional media has placed us in. Um, so I maybe there's, maybe there's some of that with the population out here. Um, the population in California, there's a, a large immigrant population as well that... Uh, eventually they'll be English speaking, but that's not their first language. Uh, Chinese in particular, large immigration of Chinese uh, and uh, uh, Mexican or, or um, Latin and South America, which has always been here. Um, so, and then there's, there's quite a bit of flight out of California right now in the upper middle class is fleeing pretty rapidly. And that's really just primarily due to taxes. I would say yeah. taxes and regulation politics, you know, the, the, most of them were really left leaning, but now that it hits the pocketbook, uh, I mean, there's corporations of business I've witnessed that that are leaving California. Yeah. I can't speak to Washington and Arizona, Nevada, uh, and, um, Oregon. As far as red pill, I think it, I think you're right, though. I do think maybe maybe the East Coast is a very large red pill presence, as large as it can be, and still pretty darn small. I think yeah. there's a lot of room to grow out here on the West uh, West Coast. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of opportunity, um, and um, I think actually you guys on the East Coast can do it, and I'll tell you why. 
because of the time difference between the East and the West Coast, you could lock up some prime prime time here on your live streams that is a little bit more difficult for those locally here that have to make a living. Yeah. So, so there's, there's opportunity here. Uh, but as far as the actual philosophies that go along with the red pill, mm -hmm. uh, or I like to call it, you know, true human intersectional dynamics, right. uh, is, uh, is the same. Uh, they're all human. They're the same and the same philosophies apply. So these guys bond pretty quickly with guys on the East coast for sure. Yeah. You know, I've witnessed it myself where there's hundreds of people on webinars and talking and uh, there's a lot more agreement than disagreement. I'll tell you that mm -hmm. even though there's open debate, I've seen open debate handled extremely well, not these one sided things that you see on YouTube, but real ones, you know, yeah. and uh, and it's pretty, pretty nice way to do it. You know, it's the communities that are out there that do engage in that. Uh, it's nice to see because there are men's clubs that are needed. We used to have them in our history. We need all men's spaces to to privately or at least with other men air our dirty laundry. And, you know, I mean, for lack of a better word, beat the crap out of each other. Yeah. Dust ourselves off yeah. and go to the bar and pop a beer together and cheers, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, one, thing uh, I, the one thing I actually miss uh, that I, you know, that I actually need to start doing again is boxing. Uh, oh. Me and my uh, me and my mentor, he does uh, movies as well as music. Uh, we were actually talking about that before uh, this whole beer bug hit. We were talking about going to the gym together, uh, going to the boxing ring and just boxing. Even though he's older than me, like I've I, I boxed guys that were older than me. But there's a level of respect that, you know, has been, you know, there's a level of respect that I've gotten because I've been in the ring with older dudes. Um, you know, they respected me a lot more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just said, you know, you're a young guy and you're going up against, uh, you know, you're going to lose, but at least you went up against us, you know, like that, that's something that I always take would, you know, I always take because, you know, I always look for respect with people, you know, boxing's fantastic. Yeah. When you say older, what are we really talking here? Red? Like, uh, <laughs> like 40, like forties and fifties. man. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, like I had to do yeah. my work. I had to exercise a little bit, even though, even, even when I was, even when I was in the gym and I, and I went, went up against these guys, you know, I was like, all right, like, I know I'm going to lose, but hell, fuck, I'm going to still fight you. It's not so bad, though. I mean, when you're an older guy like me approaching 60, it's it's uh, it's enjoyable. Um, but as a young guy coming in, it's kind of a lose lose for you, because if, if you kick the old man's ass, all you did was kick an old man's ass. Yeah, definitely. And then if he kicks <laughs> your ass, you got your ass kicked by an yeah, old man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's kind of lose lose for you young guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, eh, I still, I still do it anyway. I, no, I'm, it's good. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a crazy dude. But um, I, in my past, I have spent, I spent uh, seven years at the Gracie Academy in the '90s. So I ended up coming out of there with a purple belt okay. uh, and a stripe. And uh, until injuries sidelined me, and I finally gave it up, I truly miss the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and especially the combat aspects. But uh, I'm taking care of the earth suit now. Maybe if I found a group of guys that loved it for the technique that it was and not just wanting to throw each other around and have ego taps, then I, I yeah. might uh, I might join a club like that. All right. All right. You know, um, you, you, so you work for yourself or do you work for a you work for another electrical company? Do you what, what do you because I, I do you, both. Oh, okay, so you, so you work yeah. for yourself, and then you work for an, and you're on contract for an electrical company. Now, I'm not on contract. I'm actually an employee of a large uh, utility co corporation, which is privately held. So I'm familiar with corporate life. Um, and at one time, I was a PMP, which is a project management professional certified, okay. and I spent time on ex uh, executive staff. And uh, so I've done that, but my true love is doing the power line work. And that's what I do today. Um, it's nice to be in that group and providing a critical service. Okay. Uh, but that's not my only income stream. No. And, uh, um, and actually in 1991, I got burned by 12,000 volts. I, I screwed up at work and you can see the scars on my hands wow. and face. And uh, it, it, uh, it sidelined me for a lot of years and zeroed me out. Uh, so yeah, Thor actually handled the thunder in his hands and it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, but it changed me, changed my personality and set me on a path that was the righteous path. Yeah. Um, 
And part of my recovery to return my hands to, with the fine motor skills and sensitivity was I learned how to draw. And I took those drawings and I drew power alignment. Mm -hmm. And the drawings were good enough that people wanted to buy them. And I learned how to convert them into images to put on T-shirts and prints and posters. And in 1999, it opened a website called The Lyman's Factory. Mm. And it's lymansfactory.com. And it's the longest running gift shop that's unique to Power Lyman. And all of the artwork and designs there, I did myself. Mm. And it was enough that uh, my wife of 28 years did not have to ever work again. She could perform two or three hours of work at home, raise our four children, and uh, that provided for us and also earned additional money so that we were able to capitalize on the 2008 crash. Mm -hmm. And we were able to purchase uh, four homes and pay them off, and now we had rental income as well. Awesome. Uh, well, it's both transmission lines and distribution. I've actually flown human external cargo and taught how to do human external cargo. Uh, I've done the Faraday suit and bonded onto the 500,000 uh, uh, volts. I also have a uh, Facebook page that's tied to my website that has uh, 20,000 subscribers. It's oh. called Lyman on the Wires. And you can see all the pictures there. Currently, I'm working distribution, but I have experience in transmission to answer the question. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Uh, lineman on the wire. Okay. You can, that's Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You can expect something from me on Facebook in like sure. an hour or so. A answer the questions when you ask to join. I got to police that damn thing. Like you oh, wouldn't yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm definitely, uh, yeah, definitely gonna, um, yeah, definitely gonna. And, and I do, that's one of the things that I would say I do consult or you could say coach. And when a, a man is interested in becoming a power lineman, I have a lot of experience and access in that. And as a man wants to become an apprentice and get involved in that field, I have a lot of resources I can share with him that makes him more palatable okay. to the contractors and the employers. And I have a full list of all the schools in the U S and Canada that I can share. So anybody can contact me on IG and uh, I do charge for the hour because I fill up too quick. Yeah, and it's very reasonable, but the, the 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 information is very worth it if you wanted to explore that area of uh, a career. And I'll tell you why: because line work, power line work, is the is paid extremely well. Here on the West Coast, it is nothing to hurt to. to I mean, it's almost common that you would make two hundred thousand dollars a year here. Oh well, see there there you Easily. go. Easily, <laughs> so. There you go. It's a four-year apprenticeship program here, but I mean, you start out and you're in the upper seventies right away. Yeah. So it, it, here's the thing. It's very hard. It's very physical. Yeah. It's very dangerous. It's the fourth most dangerous job in the world by us statistics. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is behind crab fishermen. Mm -hmm. It's behind loggers, mm -hmm. uh, deep sea divers, mm -hmm. and then power linemen. You can combine both being a police officer and a fireman in rates of death and injury, and it still doesn't beat being a power lineman. You will know somebody that's burned and disfigured or dead, yeah. and we don't like that. We'd really like to change that. So the new guys that come in, pay attention, be careful. Um, we want to change that and make it a, a lot safer to, to be employed yeah. there. Let me let me tell you something, too, because, uh, you know, I'm all about, and this is why I interviewed you, uh, you know, I am about putting men up on game like this. You know, I want guys to make money. OK, and I want guys to have a good job. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm all about getting good jobs. For for example, I'm a stagehand. You know, I, I make at least fifty, seventy five thousand dollars a year. Plus, um, I'm an independent contractor. I'm not in the IA just yet. Uh, IOTC, which is um, the International Alliance uh, for Theatrical Stage Employees. But I have been um, with IA people. I have worked uh, side by side with IA guys, my uh, IA brothers and sisters, although I may not be a part of that union. But also that is a dangerous, dangerous sort mm -hmm. of um, job to take because, you know, like I'm always up on ladders. I'm uh, usually 50 feet up in the air. Uh, yep. you gotta know Harnesses, that. rigging, you gotta ropes. Have, yeah, you got to know that. You gotta understand that you are putting your life at risk for the show every day. Um, you have to know what you're doing. Uh, you you cannot afford to not know what you are doing, which is why I've 
start, which is why during this whole pandemic, you know, not only doing my podcast, but uh, getting up on certifications like fire safety, first aid, OSHA, actual OSHA certification. Guys, you really need to get OSHA certified if you are a blue collar, even if you're an electrician, get blue, get OSHA certified. You will save yourself in the end. Um, so true. Like I, I thought, you know, like and, and also another thing, too, that uh, most guys don't seem to understand is that uh, employers do look to see if you do have your card or not, uh, because that's also another thing in which they're going to look at and say, this is a person in which I'm going to hire. If you do, if you don't have your certifications uh, and I'm telling and I'm telling you right now, for most guys out here who are blue collar workers and, and do, do not have their certifications and you ha- and you did nothing in this time there's nothing i can do to help you you know like you should have been doing it right now red that's so important i need to touch on that with you because that's one of the things that i coach on is i teach guys how to how to write their resume too and and you'd be surprised even guys that have been around a long time don't understand that the employers look at you as you come in to a field like construction or something dangerous like this and they know what they're up against so they're looking for that man that actually put himself through school got himself certified, went and got a CLD, got his heavy equipment operator license, maybe even got a crane license, maybe went and got rope certified, got CPR trained. You know what that's telling them? This guy's got his shit together. He wants this bad. He goes to the top of the interview pile. Yeah, no, definitely. That's just how it works. (laughs) Definitely. And that's something that I always do with my, um, with, with myself, you know, like as an independent contractor, I do not want to be, you know, out of a job. You know, like, you know, the, lots of companies will put you out of a job, even if even if you don't know what you're like, they'll they'll give you some leeway. But now it's just like going back into this. There are no excuses. So even now with this, there are no excuses. I've been I've been learning about new audio equipment. I've been actually using new audio equipment. Um, I've been you know, again, I've been getting certified. If you're not getting certified. You're going to be in the, you're going to be alone in this. In this and, and you should be doing this your entire career. That's fantastic, Red, because, you know, uh, you should be learning your entire career because what you want to be in is a position that these really skilled power linemen are in, the ones that fly, the ones that lead the crews, they get on a job and management tells them to do something ridiculous yeah. and stupid. They'll sit there and go, why? And the manager says, because I'm the boss and they'll pack their little drag bag and they leave. Yeah. And now the management has nobody to do the job. Yeah. Here's the situation they put themselves in. They are in more, they're more valuable than the actual company that they're contracted to because they go back to the hall and they sign the book and they're working somewhere else the next day. Mm-hmm. Didn't hurt them a bit. Yeah. So they have a lot of authority and power with the management team to get things done. Now, yes, it's all about getting the work done and getting the work done safely, but it, it's amazing when that skill is out there. And I'll tell you a secret about the skilled uh, trade crafts, at least from the power line industry. Mm-hmm. 45% of us are my age or older, 58 and a half or older. And that means within the next seven years, bye, half of the workforce will be gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that means opportunity for anybody that's 40 and under that wants in this trade to make the money. And if you're considering going to university, consider this, consider that you're going to come out of university, potentially not a STEM degree, but any other degree with a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. At least that's going to, that's like a mortgage you got to pay off yep. and you're going to start out at 50,000 a year on average. You can look at statistics. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. If instead of going there for four years, you got an apprenticeship, you'd start out at 75,000 a year right away and you're banking say 25 percent of that okay by the time you reach year four you're well over a hundred thousand you've got yourself in your pocket a hundred thousand in cash or more in your pocket yeah whereas your counterpart has a hundred thousand dollars to pay off it will take him 20 years to do so you have a hundred cash you can put that money to work for you so that you now have extra money coming in and you can grow that over time if you're smart and you don't lose it, screw it up or get a starter marriage that you didn't prepare for and yeah. lose it all, mm-hmm. you'll be okay. Yeah. This is an incredible opportunity for anybody that's looking to do that and they're debating university right now. Now, that being said, 
the STEM fields are still very valuable. You can make a lot of money. Yeah. It depends on what your passion is and what you want to do. Not everybody's going to want to climb a 200 foot tower and risk that. It's very hard, sweaty, hot, and kind of miserable sometimes. Yeah. But if you like that sort of thing, you can pound your chest and look at that right there. I built that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, when I what I started learning that I actually like to do, um, aside from and hold on a second, you know, hold on before I uh, get to that. Uh, let me just shout out my guys. Uh, shout out to Satachi with the four ninety nine super sticker. I do appreciate that, buddy. Uh, shout out to John with the five dollar super chat. He says. Thor knows his stuff. I like this guy. This is how I learned from the older crew leads. That, that, that hey, one of my one of my respect. Uh, yeah, he's been he's been rocking with me since day one. So you know that says a lot. Um, La Perez, I'm gonna get to uh, man with the plan. That's my co-host. Uh, I'm gonna get to your question real quick. I'm gonna answer that for you. But um, yeah, what I started learning as a stagehand is that um, although I do like the show, I also do like staying in the shop. Right, I like being a I like being a shop foreman. Uh, when I was a shop foreman, uh, I like being, uh, you know, I just like being in the shop, like making stuff, like like fixing stuff, troubleshooting stuff. Um, I do like the show. I do like being a part of the show. Don't get me wrong, but I like being in the shop a lot. You know, like you know, just I like I like shop work. I totally um, understand. Yeah, like like d day night. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. You know, like be, don't get me wrong. I I love being out in the field. I love I love infield. I love, but I love the shop more but i also started to learn my uh second love which is um 3d printing so oh. uh, and i have i started all this year getting the book started learning how to um you know 3d print so that you know one of these days i can be a cnc uh operator then one of these days start my own business and cnc printing so you know it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a while but um yeah one of the things which i've actually started learning how to do that's the future. That 3D printing is amazing, man. Learn those computer languages. Uh, just use an example. I have a dear friend of mine. He's uh, he's 15 years younger than me, but he was a power lineman too. Mm -hmm. And so was his dad. But he took his money, he saved it, and he bought two really nice CNC machines for his second stream of income. Rented a place, and now he gets these businesses asking him to build parts. He designs them, and then he has two guys that come in part-time and build out the parts. Right. And it's pretty lucrative for him. And it's amazing because, you know, his thing is he's like, man, I just see it being a power lineman traveling over. We're just losing our manufacturing everywhere. But if we could do 3D printing or this CNC stuff for just small tasks and items we we could bring it back essentially is what he talks about and yeah. he's done very well doing exactly that red yeah yeah I, i've definitely been getting into that um it's going to take a little bit because yeah. i'm still learning about cad and whatnot but um that's something i've been uh doing that's what that's my because i've i like actually uh and i've got to mess around with one so i've made a sign before and that was for it was for a show. I forget which show it was, but um, I, I had to assist making something for a show. And that show is still on TV, uh, wow. believe it or not. So, yeah, I mean. Hey, just on a side note with the 3D printing, are, where are we at with the metal? I know they can do some now, but it's expensive with the uh, metal printing. I do believe that certain machines are uh, mm -hmm. that you can print with metal. But I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, with, with the grades that we use, uh, certain routers, certain machines will not do steel. But I'm pretty sure that certain 3D printers will um, will actually do steel. But I think they have to be like a they have to be a tougher grade. Yeah, so, it's probably expensive, too. Yeah, they're a lot more expensive. Uh, I, I mean, I, again, I haven't messed with a CNC machine since last year. <laughs> yeah. Since I'm pretty sure it was just last year, but um, my my co-host at uh, La Perez he asks, uh, should I get a o should I get OSHA certified if I do just audio engineering? So let me uh, I'll say this, man, um, that you you can do it. It's not really it's not really required. It's not required of you, but if you are, and and I'm just saying this because I do um stagehand work, um, I do it because um i i reg and i do all this other stuff so it, I, I am really required to have my osha certifications and forklift certifications because i work in shops and um if you're going down that route um if you're if you're the one putting if you're the one you know making the vector works you're putting up your um 
speakers and whatnot and you're in the field and you're doing all that work um yeah you you want to get your um osha certification if not uh it's not really needed but uh definitely going to i mean going in the future you might need it all right i'm just telling you that but that's just me but let's talk a little bit about um exercise because uh how so you so you built your own gym how did you how did you go about that man well actually i mean i started out just using kettlebells at home mm -hmm. and i belonged to several gyms too this was in my late 40s i was recovering from some ulcerative colitis caused by overuse of antibiotics for a dental issue Oh. So as I was recovering, I was slowly learning how to become more functional. I'd lost a lot of weight. I was down at 165. So, and my current weight's like 204 right now at about 12% body fat. Okay. Uh, so I, I started to build myself back up just using functional exercises such as kettlebell routines, pull-ups, chin-ups, uh, push-ups very effectively. And then I uh, was doing really well. And a friend of mine who lives in Thailand, who is a semi-pro bodybuilder, sent me a couple articles and I chatted with him. And um, he's actually a pretty famous coach now. But um, he suggested that I start doing resistance weight training for aesthetics. I could get uh, uh, less injuries because I was suffering from some elbow, uh, elbow tendonitis or lifters elbow and shoulders because a lot of the functional movements I'm moving quite a bit doing a lot of reps getting the high intensity uh, portion of the exercise which I still do once a week to this day but that right there uh, put a program together where I worked out every muscle group on my body once a week because remember I'm 52 years old at this point not knowing what to expect but wanting to look good and I kind of had abs, kind of not, but I had good shoulders, good arms, you know, good definition. Um, I went uh, from that in 18 months, I gained 18 pounds of lean body mass. That coupled with uh, food prep, you know, controlling my food intake very regularly and working out four days a week, dropping the functional to one day a week. The other three would be uh, exercises and I would split, do chest, back, and uh, I would do shoulders, abs, legs. And then eventually I added arms. And uh, and from, from there, I really gained a lot of weight. And then over the course of the next four years, I gained about three pounds per year. Uh, just this summer, I was at 209, just above 10% body fat. So as far as the abs were concerned, I had veins at 50 eight years old on my, on my abs, which is kind of unusual. I guess I have some blessings from God in my genetics for that, but it's not that it's not doable. I've met other men that can do this. It's a matter of adherence. And when I say adherence, it's also injury avoidance. One of the issues that all men face when they're doing any sport is they get competitive. Look how much weight I lifted. Look how many times I've done it. I go to the gym seven days a week, you know, and as you mature in your fitness pursuits, you'll understand that it's really not about that. It's about getting your mind into the muscle and getting the most out of the minimal amount of time and allowing your body to actually recover and repair. And if you can stay away from injuries, that means you can continue training almost year round. You yes, there's a deload every fifth week. I take four or five days off. It's not a problem. My vacations, no problem. I might hit the gym once, but I can continue this training year round, keep the food intakes correct, and I am growing muscle and increasing my functional ability continuously. Remember this, one injury, one rotor cuff tear, and you're out nine to 15 weeks, seriously. And if you go back at week six, you're now delaying another injury that you're going to have about four months later, and you're going to be out again. And this is the bane to a lot of folks that start to have injuries and uh, is is that they do too much and they the, the load supersedes the capability in either a muscle, a tendon or a ligament. And um, you see it all the time. You go to the gym, you'll have guys that are doing reps at hyper speed. That's just risking injury or guys that are look at me. I'm listing 400 pound deadlifts and blood's coming out my nose. Well, if your sports powerlifting. Train smart. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Get strong. But for 99.9% .9 of us, if you're worried about how much you're lifting that the other guys are watching, don't because I could promise you this, 
nobody gives a shit about how much you're lifting. <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, they don't care. Uh, if you're performing your exercises correctly with perfect form, it does, and, and you slow it down, you're going to tear those muscle fibers down. You're going to force your body to adapt. And if you're providing it with the proper macronutrients, there's three, you know, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, yeah. it will repair. It's what it does. And you do that over a long period of time, it's going to do very well. I liken it to this. It's just like this in all facets of life. Small actions over time end up with massive results at the end. Yeah. But it's not hardly noticeable day to day. Mm -hmm. But you come back in a year and you built a mountain. So that's kind of my fitness approach right there is injury avoidance. And it's more about uh, really getting your mind in the muscle and it's aesthetic focus. Mm -hmm. um, there's some guys that are out there real good at that. But I, uh, at least for my age, I want to keep the earth suit looking good. I mean, I got to game my wife every day, so I better look good. And yeah. she's going to she's gonna prep that food for me. She's going to have a buff floor, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And, that, and so, that's it. That's something to, and that's something to hold. I mean, your your wife is uh, holding you down and stuff like that, and you got to hold yourself down because, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they they come in this space and they ask me the same questions like, oh, well, Red doesn't have a girlfriend and stuff like that, but who's holding him down? I'm holding my own self down, dude. Exactly. <laughs> well, it, you know, that's one of the secrets when we we come out with the uh, long term re relationship maintenance um, webinars is really the best thing you can do for your relationship is hold yourself down. Yeah. You on mission brings them in. Your your leader, you're leading your own mission is really going to help you in the relationship area. You don't need the relationship. It's nice to have and it can enhance yeah. your life yeah. and 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 bring you to as long as she's on the mission with you and realizes her success yeah. is your success. If she yeah. knows that, now you've got something. Yeah, that's just the thing. I don't, I don't, I mean, it's just two plus two equals four at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised though how many of the ladies don't think that way. They're in open competition with their mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 In a masculine yeah. way. And it's promoted in society. Unfortunately, it, it is to the, I mean, even to our teenage girls, it's promoted that way. Yeah, they all come true. out of high school thinking that uh, they deserve a guy that worships the ground they walk in, yeah. you know, uh, and will eat the peanuts out of their poop. You know, yeah, I'm not. I'm, I used to be one of those dudes, and then I just realized that you know, at the at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I, I, you, you, you might as well just go find somebody else because I ain't doing it. I'm well, it's the thing is, is you don't because deep down, they don't really want that either. Yeah, no, not and even and you find that out too. I'm just like, how is this guy getting more play, and I have to jump through hoops and hurdles? I was like, oh wait a minute, no, that, that's that's the thing. I that's the thing I shouldn't be doing jumping through hoops and hurdles i was like all right i got that picture and then all the girls that you know i used to jump through hoops and hurdles for called me back and i'm just like oh yeah i'm not doing that anymore see ya like that's yeah you get, that's all you can do and i've been on this road alone but i i can't really say i've been on this road alone because no i've been doing this podcast and i've i've met you know like-minded dudes and you know even guys that are outside of this space and you I've, got your I've, brothers yeah man i've been just i've been doing my own thing and, and it's been working out pretty well there are certain things, there are certain bumps in the road, but I mean, I'm still aiming to fix all of that. Exactly. It wouldn't be worth the ride if there wasn't. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Now, can I answer Jonathan W? Yeah, definitely. This, this, this question. Yeah, that's going to be this summer. Nothing's firm yet, but the quality is going to be high. Um, with that, we're going to have some video examples of things to watch for once you're deep in an LTR that are going to be certain indicators, you know, things that might indicate contempt things that might indicate disinterest. Uh, we want to address some of those things. So as you develop an LTR, there's going to be bumps at certain times and you need to watch for them so you can maintain your attractiveness. And that will really help. As the man, you're the leader of that relationship. You know, she's the gatekeeper of the sex, but you are the leader of the relationship and it's your responsibility to hold together. You really need to understand what actually drives her at a biological level because their women are really affected by their hormones, their biology, to the extent that they don't even realize it that much. So it's really up to the man to provide that leadership. And that's what we're going to focus on. It's going to be about four webinars. We don't have a name yet, but we want the quality to be very, very high um, before we do anything with that. And it'll be very reasonably priced. Oh. Uh, it's really going to be a labor of passion more than anything else. And until then, check out 
Red Pill Thor YouTube channel, and there is a YouTube there that speaks to the surface of this, which is the, what does she bring to the table? Added values for an LTR. And what added liabilities is she bringing to the table? And that right there will get you started in thinking. And that's really to be applied after a person has had a relationship for maybe you know, six to 18 months, once that honeymoon starts to wear off, you really got to ask yourself those questions if you want to move forward uh, with a long-term relationship. Otherwise, you'd probably be better not to do that and spin plates. Uh, I have a question for you. you, you have you ever done a, an interview with uh, Afi Kingdom yet? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, you're okay. When did you do that? I haven't. I haven't oh, I did that maybe in October, and I, I, I jumped on a couple times just uh, to the channel. Okay. Offy's great. Love Offy, man. Yeah, man. Uh, we're actually going to be. In, uh, I'm actually going to be. He's going to be on my podcast again. Uh, we're going to go over his book uh, Saturday. So you know, you know, I I should preface that interview. The interview is behind a paywall. Okay. They, they, okay. That interview's okay. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of game on that that you cannot say. And yeah. Like yeah. So I'm definitely. Yeah. Yeah. They, I I understand. Um. So yeah. Definitely. Uh. Yeah, come check out uh, our channel Saturday. Uh, check out this channel Saturday because we're actually Afi Kingdom's going to be back in the building again. Uh, we're going to go over his book. Uh, that is going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, yeah, uh, that's he's going to be out there with you. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, he's going to stream yard. We're going to definitely. He's uh, about six hours from me in Oakland, so he's a West Coast guy, too. Mm, OK. All right. Yeah. Uh, look, but I'm definitely. Uh, cause I, I'm going to be taking red sings, the blues on the road pretty soon. Cool. Um, so that is a definite, um, I'm going to, that's why I'm getting all the cameras and stuff like that. I got to get three more of these mics right here. Um, I've actually gotten a case from my roadcaster. So yeah, um, I will be definitely taking uh, red sings, the blues on the road. Uh, we'll, de I'll be definitely doing uh, some road podcasts and stuff like that. Um, cause I actually do want to start, uh, doing that type of stuff on this channel. You know what I'm saying? You know, talking to people outside and whatnot. That'll be fantastic, man. If you're in California, you know I'll be there. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you got my. I got your info. So we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely link up. Do do a, a road podcast and stuff like that. I'll definitely. I gotta travel over to California anyway, so I gotta, I gotta visit there anyway. <laughs> but uh, any any other things for the future that you got, man, for uh, your channel or anything else? No, I'll take a look at. Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram at red pill thor uh and then of course the youtube channel is 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 red pill thor and uh take a look at what's there there's some fitness things there there's some philosophy um items there i read from the book of Havamil, which is also called the book of odin which was uh icelandic uh sagas from the vikings there's some wisdom to be had there and i read it i do a satire on some of it as well, which is entitled uh, When the Poon Dries Up. It's been very popular uh, with the Black Pill guys, not so much, uh, but uh, it is satire. It's humor, right. if you didn't know. But there's some of that, and then there is just a, a few other mixed items on there. There's also a small video on power line work. Okay. Uh, I do intend on growing the channel, and uh, and there's also an interview with Sterling Cooper on there and a few others. So it's, just, right. it's just starting to grow, uh, not in a big hurry. But uh, look for me, and we'll be putting out a real quality course on maintaining your LTR and also possibly exploring other versions of long-term uh, relationship that's out there and available to you as a red pill man. All right, definitely. All right, guys. Uh, if you Again, guys, if you have not uh, subscribed to uh, Red Pill Thor, you guys are missing out. You guys are definitely missing out. Um, again, uh, thank you, Red Pill Thor, for coming out. I do, I do appreciate you, my friend. Uh, we definitely got to do this again. We definitely sure. got to do some more talks again like this. Uh, guys, you can find me on Instagram, Sings Red Blue, and you can also find Red Pill Thor at, uh, what's your Instagram again? Red Pill Thor. All right, Red Pill Thor. You heard that correct. Red Pill Thor. Zencast is the place where you want to get all audio versions of the podcast. Please give us time. We have a lot more audio versions to get through. And Cash App Red Sings the Blues is the place where you want to donate $5, a dollar, whatever have you guys. Likes, comments, and shares are free. Hit that notification bell, guys. As we are on our way to 5,000 subscribers, a uh, big shout out to Zatachi001 with the 499 super sticker and John W with the $5 super chat. I do appreciate you guys. Remember, YouTube does take 30%. And remember one more thing we've got to have 
money. All proceeds do go back into studio equipment as well as studio funding for Red Sings the Blues. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow at 6. Have a good one, guys.